Hello, my name is Stephen Boone, and I want to show you with this little video how I make my mini planes. The first thing I do is I start with some 01 tool steel that's an eighth of an inch thick by a half inch wide. And using this jig and my little vise and a hacksaw, I'll cut off pieces of the steel into um, blade blanks. You can see that I have a cross cut that's at a 30 degree angle and then a cross cut at the end that makes them square and I end up with a little pile of blanks like this. So the next thing I do is I'll take those blade blanks over to my forge and you can see here I've got a bucket of oil and it's a propane forge with my tongs and I'll um, take it up to temperature. I've got this little thermometer that tells me when I'm about to be at about 1500 degrees or so and you can see it in action here. The forge is pretty spectacular and once I get it to the nice orange color that I'm looking for I'll quench everything in oil and uh, the blades will get hard. After that I need to temper the steel or anneal it a little bit so I've got a hot plate with a bucket of water there and I'll hold the blade blanks at about 450 degrees for a few minutes and quench them in water and then what I have is a stack of blanks that are ready to go and you can see that the condition on them is quite rough. Here you can see that I have a maple body blank which I'll cut into three pieces. I use my sled that I built for my table saw to help me with that task and it holds the angles the same. The front of the planes on the left with the rear on the right and the triangle will be discarded after it's used later. I'll put a radius in the front of the plane with my drum sander and now you can see all the components together. The pieces of rosewood for the side I cut from fingerboard blanks. Using my jig I can hold everything in alignment with a good space in between the front and back of the plane for where the blade goes and after it's glued up a little bit of glue squeeze out. We'll clean all that up and we'll set the subassembly aside to dry for a while and it'll be in good shape later. So here you can see a rough blade that needs some attention. First I want to use my disc sander and kind of clean up the back edge that will go against your hand. I'll radius that and shape it by hand on the disc sander and kind of clean that up to make it comfortable. From there I'll turn my attention to the bevel and I'll grind a rough bevel with this work sharp station here. After the bevel is ground then I'm going to go ahead and intend to flattening the, black, the back of the plane iron and I use various grits of sandpaper to do that. So you can see the back here when it's rough state and using a rare earth magnet as a little handle I'll just move it back and forth briskly and start to clean up the, uh, the shiny surface there of the back of the plane. I'll work through several grits up to 1500 and then 2000 grit and uh, you can see the handle in action there. And the final result would be a nice polished backside, as you can see in the image here. It is now time to attend to the bevel of the iron. You can see that it's got rough grind marks from the grinder. Now I'll go ahead and set up my honing guide with the jig I made to do so. And using this sets the iron at a 30 degree angle, which is just right. I'll use my abrasive uh, sandpaper on the flats that uh, you saw earlier and I will try to get the scratch marks out until they're nice and even. From there I'll use this honing guides device to set a micro bevel. You see the tick mark is up and then now the tick mark is down. It slightly elevates the plane and it'll allow me to use my 1500 grit and 2000 grit sandpapers respectively and I can put a nice polished edge right at the tip of the plain iron. A little more general cleanup and I'll have a nice shiny plain iron that's ready to go into this plane. Now I need to lay out where to drill the hole for my cross pin so I have to take into account the thickness of the blade, the thickness of the wedge, and one half the thickness of the pin itself. I will insert the triangular part that was waste from earlier 
and go ahead and drill the, the hole from our cross pin. The pin's made of brass and it's a quarter inch in diameter and it looks like that when we put it in and I'll help secure it with a couple of drops of super glue from the inside. Here I'm trimming the body to length with my crosscut jig and um, this shot shows before I make the body a wedge shape. I use a disc sander to put a wedge shape onto the sides of the plane and this allows the blade of the plane to get very close to the top of the guitar when you're shaping braces. A little touch up on the drum sander and the basic shape of the mini plane is formed. Using a template I have transferred the shape of the wedge to the wedge stock that you see here and after I get it shaped I have all the major components complete. Next comes the task of fitting the iron to the um, plane itself and it's complicated. I use a chisel to open up the mouth and then I flatten the base of the plane and then I sight down the the plane and look at the iron and then I'll use a chisel to adjust the mouth again and I'll keep doing that until I feel like I can take a test shaving and uh, in this particular case the mouth was still a little too tight you can see there that the shaving couldn't escape so I worked it again until I got a shaving that I liked so we're in good shape now from now on it's just a pretty much a matter of cleanup so a little sandpaper to the side I use the drum sander to put a, uh, a round portion on the front of the plane that helps it to jump over any bridge patches or things that you may have in the way back strips a little 220 grit wrapped around a eraser and of course the SB on the side of the plane distinguishing it is mine and a few more test cuts and is working pretty well sometimes you'll notice pencil marks in the front of your plane I just use a pencil to clear out any shavings that happen to get in the way and finally there's the mini plane it just does a nice job and it's in good shape I don't put a finish on the plane I don't think it needs it but you can always put a finish on it later if you want so hey here I am with this mini plane that I just made in one of my guitars and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it answers any questions you may have had so until next time thanks for looking